Hey there, it's Marvina, and I wanted to welcome you to my Psychic Media Marvina page today. So I'm going to take questions today about how you can connect to your angels and know when they're working with you and when they're trying to get you some messages. So I wanted to let you know that you can share this page if you have some like-minded friends that you think might enjoy it or might benefit from angel messages today. And also wanted to let you know that I will be giving away a prize at the end of my session. So I'm going to give away a 30 minute angel reading. And if you will stick around to the end of my video, and it'll last about 45 minutes, maybe an hour. It just sort of depends on if my, if my dogs are good or not. So hopefully they will be really good and the angels will help to keep them entertained and keep the UPS man away for a while. So we did have a handful of people that have already um, brought their, um, uh, posted some questions. If you have questions for your angels, you can just post them in the comments on the sidebar and um, I will see if I can um, answer them on the video today. So uh, one of the questions that already came in was uh, from a lady named Jan, and she wanted to know uh, what she could do to help kind of uh, change up some of the different things going on in her life that she felt very locked into a um, kind of a, a low prosperity consciousness and wanted to know what she could do or if there was a karmic reason for that and if her angels had any answers to uh, those questions. So um, one of the things that I noticed is that you use a nickname instead of your full name. And anytime that you uh, go about the world with your nickname. You are um, you're not using your whole wherewithal, like your true soul essence identity, and so you don't have access to the fullness of your higher self and maybe some of the things that you've learned in other lifetimes that could possibly help you. So, and it has to do with the vowels in your name, especially. So anytime that you use a nickname, I think you're limiting yourself. And another thing that might be blocking you is that you still have your uh, former husband's name instead of your birth name. And that is, sometimes that can be beneficial and sometimes it can work against you, especially if your um, husband's family lineage had a lot of karma associated with it, then when you wear his name, then you are sort of living out some of that family lineage karma, not only on your side of the family, but on his side of the family as well. So those are two things that you could do to help you kind of um, break a stagnant pattern and have access to some of your more of your higher self and more of your own essence. So use your full name as much as you can. And, um, and that will be one thing that will help you just right off the bat to claim more of your natural creativity and be able to, um, I think, put yourself out into the world in a more authentic way and anytime that you're really being in your authentic self, the good, the bad, the ugly, the messy, whatever, then it is, um, it sells better or it, it interacts with others better. And I think you'll be more successful that way. But those are some little things to do. And I know that changing your name or when you have a long history of using a nickname and then uh, introducing yourself with your full name, it could be a little bit of an awkward period 
because I did that myself. My real name is Marvina, but my nickname is Sammy. And so for a long time, I went by that. And it was awkward whenever I started um, telling everybody my real name. And to this day, there are some people that only call me Sammy. So it's, uh, it's not easy, but it is doable. So I hope that that helps you. Um, it'll help you with bringing your creativity out into the world e in an even bigger way. And that is associated with our, our prosperity. So I think it, it'll be useful in that way. So another question that came in um, is from uh, Misty and she had a meditation the other day and one of her guides uh, told her that she is a medicine woman and that she needed to start acting like that and she wanted to know what that meant. So to me, that means that you trust your um, why you do what you do, where your heart is in regards to your healing work, and you honor that part of yourself, and you know that you have good intentions to, to do good things in this world in regards to your healing. And I think that helps to give you confidence so that you can um, walk your talk in the path of your own heart in a more natural way. So I think that your guide is just trying to tell you to uh, be who you are, um, unashamed about what that is, and trust your, um, your guides to help you land on your feet and to help you to navigate this soul journey in a good way. So don't, don't feel like you have to um, put on a, uh, some sort of a, of a front to the world. It's like um, you know why you do what you do and when you're being authentic, it helps your uh, the people around you to be more accepting and to be willing to work with you. One of the things that I did when I started doing uh, Reiki, the uh, hands-on healing modality, is that I didn't have a whole lot of clients, but I did have friends and family that needed energy work. So I worked on them, but I also did a lot of long distance uh, healing work and Reiki ceremonies. And I think that is um, how I started to develop a feel for what I was doing and how it could be beneficial to others. So anyhow, um, thank you for asking your question. And let me see if I have another one over here. Um, all right, so um, Jackie wanted to know if her family is around her. So Jackie, I definitely feel like you've got lots of family that uh, support you. They don't stay with you like all the time because they all have their own journey on the other side where they're continuing their lessons. But you definitely have a lot of interaction from your grandmother. I feel like your parents are around as well quite often. And I feel like a Mary, a lady with that name or similar to that is around. And it might be one of your angels that is uh, goes by that name or that's how you can relate to her. But anyhow, and a rose as well. So you definitely have a crew around you today that I think are just working to help keep you inspired and keep you motivated uh, for your soul journey here on this lifetime. They know that you're a very sensitive soul and that sometimes seeing some of the, the harshness of this earth dimension uh, really takes a toll on you. So they try to help you to stay inspired and to stay motivated for um, the rest of your journey. So I had another one uh, come on. Um, so um, I think it's Kinsey wanted to know um, if her mother is around her. So you're, 
Okay, so her mother passed away a couple of weeks ago, and um, that's very close. I mean, it takes usually um, anywhere from three to seven days for a soul to complete the the Bardo journey and uh, to really kind of get comfortable on the other side and go through the orientation period and where they have um, reviewed their life experiences. So she's probably still working with some of that, but she does try to peek back in into uh, this dimension and just um, reassure you the best way that she can. And so um, whenever you have um, a sense of like a fragrance, like the perfume that she liked to wear, then you'll know that she is visiting you. And then sometimes you might see like lights or shimmers around. And that's just her way of trying to let you know that she's around and that she's okay. I really feel like she worries about you, that um, she thinks of you as her her baby and that um, you'll always be her baby and therefore she's worried that you can take care of yourself, but she does have faith in you and she knows that you have grown up into a wonderful woman and that you'll be able to uh, navigate your soul journey, but she does intend to visit you as regular as she can, and she doesn't want you to worry about her. I do see a pilot that um, kind of, I don't know how the pilot is connected into your family, but it looked like maybe someone that might have, um, uh, maybe they flew in the war or one of the wars, they were a uh, like a fighter pilot or some sort of a, like a long time ago, not like something in this day and age. And I also feel like your cousin is wanting you to know that he's around and he's giving you a big hug and he, um, he worries about you too, but he trusts that you're made out of good stuff and that you're going to be able to work through this. Uh, okay. So know that he's there as well. All right, so what else? Um, okay, so Savannah wanted to know if her boyfriend is her soulmate or a twin flame. And so what, um, what I get about that is I do feel like he is out of your soulmate family and she she also wanted to know why they have such an awkward time in this dimension. And one of the things that um, that I think you should know about either a soulmate or a twin flame is that it's not necessarily like all roses uh, with either a soulmate connection or a twin flame. Uh, our um, especially our twin flames, they um, they mirror us so well that if we have unfinished business, which you are working through some of your personal pieces and having some challenges uh, working through those, so they uh, reflect our icky stuff and the stuff that we need to work on. They just um, they mirror that to us so strong that it is um, it's hard for us because. Uh, we can't hide anything from them. So it it seems like it puts stress on us to um, to do something, but we may not know quite what we need to do. So in this case, taking care of your own business, and that means um, doing your forgiveness work and uh, doing what you can to put yourself out in the world in a good way, taking care of your responsibilities, taking care of your children, and and doing what you can to make up for in the past where you have uh, disappointed someone or hurt someone or took advantage of someone, that sort of thing. So working your personal business. So you wanna make that your keyword for the rest of the year. And as you try to heal yourself 
and um, let go of your attachments to how other people might have let you down or disappoint you, meaning doing your forgiveness work for other people. It's going to help you to, um, to kind of balance out so that the relationship is not so um, like icky that um, that you're doing what you can to take care of your personal business and hopefully your um, spouse is too it's always helpful <laughs> so um, that that can definitely help you to um, have a better relationship and quite often uh, whenever twin flames are one or other of the partners are not willing to work through their personal business, then uh, sometimes you have to separate for a while and go your own way in order to do your healing and to work through everything on your own. And then sometimes you can come back to that relationship and sometimes it's like um, the universe just pulls you in different directions. But don't feel like you're wasting your time um, but make sure that you're doing what you can to take care of your own business, okay? So if you're new to my page here for the, the video, you can post a question for your angels in the comments below and um, can't make any promises, but I will see what I get. So, um, So uh, Wendy wanted to know if her angels can help her to deal with an injury. So our angels can uh, give us a lot of inspiration, a lot of clues, and we are the ones that have to take action on those, uh, those clues or whatever uh, ideas that your angels give to you. So what I would suggest is that every night before you go to sleep is just ask your angels to help you to uh, bring healing, light, love, and healing energy into your aura to help repair any damage that has been done and to bring in any healing symbols or vibrations, healing frequencies, any colors that can be beneficial to you or any ideas that you can take into your waking uh, state to help you repair the damage to your body and to rejuvenate your system or to whatever it is that needs to happen. Ask them to do as much as they can at night while you're sleeping and to give you ideas that you can follow up on in um, in the in your waking state. So they might uh, give you the idea to visit, say, a um, a holistic doctor or a osteopathic doctor for some sort of a, an adjustment that can free up the spinal uh, system that can help to uh, repair whatever damage in the bones. They might encourage you to, um, to do meditation during the day. There are so many different ways to, that you could approach a healing paradigm. And you want to be flexible and you want to follow your instincts as much as you can because that's how they're going to give you the impressions on what you need to do to help you um, with your healing curve. And as you're going through that healing curve, you're always going to need to be checking in to your, your physical, mental, and emotional bodies and see what sorts of adjustments that you might, you might need to make. So um, if they say, uh, we want you to take one tablespoon of organic uh, coconut oil a day, then that might work for a couple of weeks, but there might come a time where you need to adjust that and do less or maybe do more. So constantly checking in and just seeing, um, do I need to make adjustments in my lifestyle, what I'm eating, what I'm drinking, especially what you're thinking in regards to your health and vibrancy. And then you are the one that has to follow up on that because you're the grounding 
agent. You're the one in the physical, so you have to make the physical adjustments. They can do amazing things and be incredibly helpful, helpful, but you are the one that has to take the action. And uh, sometimes they might encourage us to do some, uh, like backtracking into painful events in our lifetime that have caused a negative charge on our system somewhere. And in order for us to have a healing in a certain area of our body, we have to let go of an event that happened in the past that we're still holding on to anger or we're holding on to fear or we might be holding on to resentment and it is blocking our vibrancy it's blocking the chakra system and keeping us from being able to be as healthy as we could be so there are so many different levels that you will need to address in your healing curve but think physical emotional mental and uh, spiritual and what can you do to um, address each of those levels so you might need to do some uh, prayer work uh, meditation is one of the best medicines that we can do and it's free so make good use of it you might need to do some sorts of uh, yoga or um, different types of therapies to integrate your um, your emotions or integrate your experience so that you can get into a different frame of mind about whatever it is that uh, triggered that uh, situation. So yes, your angels can help you, but they, uh, they can't do it for you. You have to take some action and do what you can do yourself to uh, turn things around into a more favorable uh, way. And we're always going to need to be doing that throughout our life. We are always going to have um, these, what I call chaos experiences, where things feel like they're uncomfortable, they feel like they're out of control, and um, it's a part of our self-mastery experience to go through those chaos moves. It helps us to kind of go to a higher level of consciousness, but usually it's a little uncomfortable to do that. Almost always uh, we have to face some of our fears of the unknown, but our angels can definitely help us to face our fears and to engage with whatever uh, is scaring us and help us to have confidence in ourselves to overcome those fears. So they definitely can help you. All right. Um, okay. All right, so uh, Christy wanted to know what angels are around her. So everybody has a team of angels that um, that come in and stay for our journey to help us navigate our entire uh, soul journey while we're here. And depending on what you came to accomplish, so if you um, were coming into this dimension and you had a huge agenda to really take on uh, some, some big picture uh, pieces of business, then you would have a bigger team of angels around you to protect you, to keep you inspired, to help um, help you navigate uh, everything and, and move forward in a good way. Uh, for most people, we have you know anywhere from three to seven that um, interact with us on a regular basis, and they have different roles in our journey here. Some are here to help us uh, work through our karmic pieces of business that we have um, initiated in other lifetimes. And every lifetime that we incarnate into, we carry with us a template on a cellular level of every journey that we've ever taken. Every one of our physical incarnations we um, are imprinted on a cellular level of what we learned, uh, what, um, what we gained in that lifetime, and also 
where we might have missed the mark and created some karmic things. So we do have a karma angel that keeps a record and she keeps a perfect record of what we've initiated in other lifetimes, but we might not have completed in that lifetime. And therefore, um, before we even came into this lifetime, they sort of uh, had a little powwow with other souls that we might have unfinished business with. And they're like, okay, so Marvina is going to be here at so-and-so time and Christy's going to be here at such and such a time. And this will be a perfect opportunity for them to review a little karmic thing that happened in whatever lifetime. And our goal is to um, face our piece of business and to overcome it in a good way and not to revert back to whatever habits or patterns that we had in that lifetime where we might have um, like, not handled it in a good way. So you have karma guides, you have timing guides that work with your karma guides to help create a perfect um, circumstance where you bump into somebody and they, um, they might help you through a really challenging event and just be a, a huge, uh, it make a huge impression on you at that time and then they disappear and you never see them again. So they, you have a uh, timing guides, you have karma guides, you have a protector guide that's called your Asher and you don't interact with that guide that, um, that is one of your angels that is really set on protecting your journey here and protecting your physical um, body against harm so you don't uh, try to distract them from with silly questions or any questions uh, that you ask your other angels and um, so that you don't distract that guide but you do have guides and angels that help you to understand what's important to do right now and what's the the most powerful way that you can move forward in your journey they help you to separate out the foolish things the silly things the things that don't really matter to uh, dialing in on on what can be the most beneficial way for you to move through this lifetime so that you definitely have angels we all have angels even if we think that we don't deserve them or that we've been very, very naughty in this lifetime and that um, there's no way that an angel would be interested in uh, connecting with us. We still have our crew. Our crew um, are with us even when we deny them, even when we go into a really dark place. And uh, But what you can do if you are on this uh, this video today and you feel like you've been in a very dark place is just ask them to step forward and to be present and to in some way make themselves known in your life and to help you to figure out what you need to do in order to move out of this stagnation or to let go of your attachments to whatever it is that is keeping you down, whether it's attachments to uh, things that you drink that are not good for you or anything that you eat or attachments to um, whatever, whatever negativity. And it could be even attachments to a belief system that your parents introduced to you and said, this is the way you live your life and or if somebody else introduced you to a belief system that is no longer serving you and it's keeping you limited your angels can help you to release your attachments to things that are no longer serving your highest soul good but again you are the one that has to make that declaration and to take action on that in some way so um I hope that helped you and let me see. All right, so Tina wanted to know um, 
how she will know if her angels are around her. So it's a good question. They show themselves in so many different ways. Um, so my favorite way is whenever they show little bubbles of light and hopefully they have been showing some light in the video today while I was uh, getting ready this morning and I did some uh, sound checks. There was all kinds of orbs in the video. So that's one of the biggest ways that they show me that they're around is that I will see lights or I might see orbs, but um, those are pretty common to see the lights, like the twinkles. You can also occasionally get a scent, like a rose, like a fragrance or different scents will come in and they're the higher vibrational uh, fragrances like rose, maybe jasmine, especially when uh, Mother Mary, the Angel Mary is around, then you'll get a, a fragrance of a rose. And that's one of the highest vibrational flowers. And that's one of the ways that you will get a little bit of a clue that she is around. You might hear like little bells. You might um, have feathers that just appear out of nowhere, like you'll, especially white feathers. There are so many different ways that they will give you a little bit of a clue. Um, you just have to kind of get, get quiet and just be aware. And sometimes you might just feel them around. That, and that's one of the ways that I know is that you just get a sense of, um, of a really sweet, protective, loving, kind, supportive energy, um, something that is not judging at all, that is just pure love. And their goal is to inspire us and to help to elevate our consciousness when we get into a funky frame of mind or a negative train of thought. They help us to go from where we are and get to a higher level of consciousness. And once we can elevate our consciousness, then we are in a, a better position to uh, get ideas and messages from our highest guardian angel from our higher self that can help us to kind of figure our way out of whatever situation that we're in. I have had some incredible experiences with my angels that um, have actually, I think, saved my life at different times. Uh, several, I've had several near-death experiences. I have one time I was in the corral with my horses and we were working the horses and one of my mares um, ran out of the corral and I had my back to her and so I didn't see her coming out, but my angel just kind of um, swooshed me up against the, the side panel of the corral so that I was uh, not in her way. and. It probably, it, I don't know if it saved my life, but it definitely saved me from a very traumatic energy because injury, because she was like a 1200 pound mare, but it was a small kind of an alleyway. And the, um, the amazing part about it was, is that um, I didn't see her coming, but my angels just kind of shoved me up against the side of it. And it kept me from being physically injured. And I've had several, other near-death experiences that I can only attribute to my angels at, at uh, helping me to get out of that situation. It, it was several times. So um, when you feel like you have experienced something like that, just acknowledge them and let them know that you're aware that you know they're there, you're grateful, you appreciate their presence in your life, and that encourages them to have more interaction with you and to help you to create your soul's dream. Now, there is a difference between what our ego uh, wants to do and what our soul really intends to do with our life journey. And a lot of times you might get frustrated because you want your angels to help you move forward on 
what your ego has in mind for success or what it thinks will be a successful way to live your life but you feel frustrated because you don't feel like they're helping you but when you start to adjust that dial in your mind towards uh, aligning it with your soul's intended journey that's whenever the magic really starts to happen and you just get epiphanies of uh, ideas that of where you can uh, make connections and your timing guides and your karma guides they help to coordinate with those people that can be hugely helpful to you if you're moving towards your soul's path and highest purpose so magic can happen uh, whenever you uh, sort of what I think of uh, giving it up to God to deal with and um, it, it helps the angels to kind of get behind what um, what can help you to move forward the most all right so let me see what else um, Okay, so Bonnie wanted to know uh, what the angels tell about her mother. So Bonnie, I don't know um, what I was just getting about about your mom is that you've had many other lifetimes where you have had different sorts of relationships, sometimes mother daughter, but sometimes a friend, uh, different sorts of uh, scenarios that uh, go on and what they want you to think about is just trusting your mom's angels to help her navigate her soul lessons in this lifetime and in other lifetimes and to trust that um, you will have many different lifetimes to come with your mom and not to fret about that but I did see a fluffy dog connected i think to your energy and and it looks sort of like um like a poodle to me i'm not sure if it was a poodle but it had it had like a little fluffy look to it so hello carol hi mandy so um rachel rachel wanted to know if her angels can help her help her to renovate her house so what i would suggest is um connecting to the angel of the house everybody's house has its own angel and the angel of the house is going to be uh, located in approximately the center of your home so find out where the center of the house is and um, what there's many different ways that you can approach this but um, one simple way is to meditate there and just ask the angel of the house to help you uh, do whatever renovations are the most important uh, right off the bat to secure your house so that it's healthy all of the different systems are in place your electrical your foundation the major pieces just meditate on on those ideas and ask her to help you dial in to what is the most important thing to do first so it is hugely important that um, we realize that our house influences us and um, if the foundation, if the different systems are not secure and they're not in place, it's going to be very difficult for us to have the most powerful journey that we can because we're not going to be able to rest properly and nurture ourselves properly and utilize that space to, um, to repair our energy field, to um, to be a place that we can use as a foundation for our journey. So our home needs to be kept in top shape as much as we can and clutter free as much as we can. And just be mindful that once you get past the, the foundation and the, the basic renovations that um, your angels can help you to 
bring in other pieces that can be um, supportive of you. And this is a whole, whole huge piece of business. Um, you could say a can of worms, but um, as we evolve and mature and go through our different uh, pieces of business, what we want to surround us with is, is going to be different. What nurtures us one year may not nurture us in the next year. And what inspires us today, a week from now, we might um, be over that. So we need to um, just be intuitive about the colors that feel supportive to you, that feel restful, depending on what you need each room to do in your house. Uh, ask your angels to sit with you and just really get um, dialed in on the purpose of that room and how best to set that room up for success so that it does what it needs to do. So in your meditation room, you want an area that is very peaceful, that is tranquil, that makes you feel protected and buffered and supported where you feel like um, you, you don't have to worry about anybody um, barging in or uh, bothering you in there. So the whole template for a meditation room is going to be totally different than the template for, say, like a, an exercise room where you want it to feel expansive and inspirational. You want to feel energized. You want to feel like you can do uh, whatever sort of uh, yoga practice or, or exercise that you need to do. So it'll be a little bit of a different template. And then your kitchen is where you nurture yourself. So the colors, everything that goes in there, it needs to be uh, supportive of um, what you need to do, how you best see that part of the house supporting you. Definitely sit with your angels and they will inspire you. You might um, feel like you need to get on Pinterest and take in some other ideas. They might nudge you to uh, read some books or go to the library or talk to a friend that has a, a home that, that um, is just particularly uh, meaningful to you. So they will kind of give you some nudges and help you to have some ideas or some insight as to what's the most important way to go now. But trust your instincts, trust your own intuition. They have been with you from your birth. So sometimes people feel frustrated, like uh, they don't know where they are or how to connect to them. They have been with you from birth and they will be with you until death throughout your whole journey. So often they, we don't know where we end and they begin because they're that close to us. But um, they always have messages that are for our higher good. They're never going to uh, suggest something that could be harmful to ourselves or any other living being. And sometimes uh, what we call pretender guides will come in and, and make suggestions that are not, um, that don't meet that criteria, but our angels, they will never suggest something that is going to be harmful to us or to anyone else. Okay. Okay, I gotta see this. <laughs> Sorry, I can't see this very well. It's so small. Hi, Kelly. Um, yes, I definitely feel like uh, Nita Ann is just wanting to give you a hello, and I love you too. And don't feel sorry for me. I'm okay on the other side, and I'm with my family and uh, friends and a sister and definitely have lots of catching up to do. Uh, she just wants you to know that um, you definitely have angels in your house and especially your son. And even though sometimes it may feel very overwhelming and very challenging for you, 
that there is a, a reason and a purpose in your journey together and even the hardships that um, that you've had to go through and where you might have felt limited. And she just wants you to know that she has your back on the other side and uh, to thank you for your support and for your prayers and for helping her family. So she loves you bunches. Um, she just says you were a good pal and that we had a lot of fun together. And thanks for putting up with her because she feels like um, she was kind of uh, quirky is, is the idea that I got. Um, I saw a, a lion, so um, I'm not sure what the Leo lion reference is, but I, I thought um, it was like the MGM lion on TV that we used to see a long time ago, but um, I'm not sure what that, what that has a reference to, but she's okay on the other side, and I feel like um, that some of your ancestors are there too. So it seems like a name um, like Hattie or Maddie or something like that is around. So um, it feels like a relative, um, like an ancestor, like maybe a grandmother or a great aunt, because it felt like up there a little ways. And then um, maybe someone with a name like Mickey or Nikki and um, so I don't know what that's about, but you've got some crew around that love you that are working with you today. So thanks for stopping in. So um, Erica is uh, writing about can her angels help her to deal with the transition of her uh, husband that passed several years ago. So yes, they can help you to um, get some insight as to um, the life lessons of that relationship, the journey of his soul, the journey of your soul, and what was really important for you both to get out of your relationship here. And the way that you get that insight is just a good old fashioned meditation. Uh, light some candles, burn some incense, Find a place that's really quiet in your house, and you might have a, a picture of him uh, in there, and just um, ask your most holy guardian angel to sit with you, call upon the presence of his most holy guardian angel to sit with you in this ceremony with the angels, and to relay to you the... Um, the important things that his soul wanted to bring to you in this lifetime and maybe what you wanted to share with him and especially you want to um, think about any unfinished business, any uh, do any forgiveness work. If you feel like there were some things where uh, you need to forgive him or he needs to forgive you. You want to ask for forgiveness or you want to offer forgiveness, whatever the case might be. And just meditate on, on some of the things that um, he wanted to bring into your life that you felt were undone or that you felt were unsaid and just speak them. So if you feel like you didn't uh, tell him how appreciated he was, then this is the time to let him know um, in as great of detail as you can how you appreciated him at whatever the circumstance might be. It is a time to um, let your heart talk and um, just trust that his higher heart on the other side of the veil will listen and um, that you can resolve issues or you can get an insight about why spirit pulled him home earlier than what you think uh, he should have been or, or what the circumstances was. If he had fear pieces or, or whatever it is, it may take several, several 
sessions in sitting with the angels and calling his higher guardian angel to work with you until you feel a sense of completeness. And you'll know whenever you get to that point because there won't be like a charge um, on his name. Like when anybody brings up his name or you just think of him out of the blue, it'll feel right. It won't, it, it'll just feel neutral and you won't, um, you won't cry or you won't be like burdened with sadness. So you will know, but you want to shoot for the idea of feeling complete and feeling very neutral. And, uh, but we have to be willing to um, engage with our, um, our personal uh, business and especially where we owe people, where we're, we're, we have debt, like we owe an apology or we need, we said we would do something and we need to make good on that promise. Uh, we definitely need to take care of our personal business. If we don't, we're going to have to engage with it in another lifetime. And then it's going to hamper this lifetime. And it will also hamper that lifetime because we'll have a karmic piece of business to deal with in that lifetime. And we could have been spending that time towards um, building our goals instead of uh, taking care of old business. So they can help you. But again, they can't do it all for you. So they can give you the clues, they can give you some ideas, but we are the ones that have to kind of run it through our, our system and, and actually um, look at, at uh, different parts of ourself that um, might be holding on to fear about being alone or anger about being left a, a widow, whatever it is. We have to be willing to look at um, some of the unflattering parts of ourselves and be willing to transform that. Uh, there's a lot of ways that you can help um, to kind of um, keep their presence in their life for one thing, we really need to realize that just because they're no longer in a physical body, that doesn't mean that their soul journey is over because they still have opportunities on the other side of the veil to continue to grow, to learn, uh, to be creative. It's just without a physical uh, vehicle to interact with, but they, they still have their own soul business but they can come and visit us from time to time. And if you feel like that's um, particularly important to you, just ask and just say, you know, uh, every Sunday morning, I, um, I'll be here in this room and I hope that you can sit with me and just share with me your adventures and let me share my adventures or my worries and concerns or whatever. But uh, when you, it's like when you create a space for your angels, for your ancestors, and a time in particular, it makes it easier to get that, um, to get some feedback, to actually get a, um, to get them to come. It's just like um, when you see a friend and you say, well, call me sometime. Well, it may, it may happen, it may never happen. But if you say, hey, call me Saturday night, I have some things that I wanna run by you, you're more likely to take care of something or to actually get them on the phone and be able to have a communication with them. It's the same way with your angels. If you are really feeling lonely and feeling out of sorts and like your life is not going the way you want it to, if you create a daily time to sit with your angels and you show up every day, then your angels will show up every day too. And if you feel awkward, it's just like any relationship. There's uh, often a like a time frame where um, we feel like a, awkward within our relationships, but as we 
as we show up every day and we get more comfortable with that um, that idea, that spirit, sitting with that angelic spirit, we get more comfortable. We build a better rapport, a better relationship. And I feel like that is uh, very important for us. I, I think the one of the most powerful things that we can do in this lifetime is to cultivate a great relationship with our most holy guardian angel that that can be a support for us in the most traumatic of times. It can be the most encouraging and inspirational for us and consistent and easy. It's, it's always there for us. So it's definitely worth our time. So anyhow, um, I'm going to wrap up my uh, video today. Uh, I've got some dogs back there that need to go outside. but. Um, what I'm going to do is I have a, a free 30-minute angel reading for Savannah. So Savannah, if you will contact me, uh, we can set up your reading. And uh, next Thursday, I will be back here at 1 o'clock uh, Central Standard Time. So if you want to uh, join me next week, have your questions ready. You can send them ahead of time if you want to, or you can post them uh, that day. And be sure and and share the video with your friends if you think they would uh, enjoy it or can make use of it. So I hope this has been helpful to you and I really appreciate you all um, stopping by today. <coughs> <coughs> oh God, <coughs> excuse me. So <coughs> they're taking my voice away. So I've got to go. Bye-bye, <laughs> y'all. Have a great day. Thanks a lot. Bye.